All right, next we'll show you how to modify an existing symbol within Planner and also how to create new symbols. Let's get started by going up to our content library and we need to select the symbol tab and then we'll select the category. Now I'm in tree deciduous here, so let's just go ahead and stick with it. And let's go ahead and go down to the ash fall. And if I right click on that and I want to change it, I have a, a resize symbol option here which gives me a box where I can change the diameter of that symbol. Okay, let's go ahead and cancel that one. If I right click on it, I also have a recolor symbol option, which gives me a color palette of uh, several different colors to choose from. And what this does is it changes all of the colors uh, to a single color on a symbol. Okay, so let's go ahead and cancel that. And another thing that we can do here is if I want to completely change the looks of the symbol, I can right click on that symbol and select edit this symbol. Okay, and that brings my symbol up in symbol editor. Now, you'll notice here if I click on the, away from that symbol that the symbol is green. Uh, and I can, I can come in and I can change the color of these lines or uh, I can also add new lines to it. So let's go ahead and add a, a center side circle to this. And I'm going to click on the middle here and drop a circle there. Okay, now that's uh, selected a black one, which was the default color. I can also come up to the uh, edit bar up here and I can select a different color. And I'll reapply a center side circle like so. Now it should be red. Okay, if I'm happy with the, the design here and I'm ready to save it, I can come up to the file menu and select save symbol. Okay, it says that it's a fall ash. It says that it's in the library of tree deciduous and the category is deciduous. I can insert a description here, that's not required. I do want to make sure that link to database is checked. I'll click OK and it asks me if I want to overwrite the existing one, and I'll say yes. Okay, and that closed the symbol editor, and now if I come over to Fall Ash, you'll see here that it has changed slightly. Okay, next let's go ahead and create a new symbol. So I'm going to go up to the Tools menu, and we'll select Symbol and Symbol Editor. Okay, now that Symbol Editor is open, I can come over to the All-in-One Toolbar and I can select any of my drawing tools to start drawing a symbol, or I can go up to the Draw menu and I can select them here. Okay, a lot of users, what they'll do is they'll want to use an existing symbol uh, in the database, and there's a little bit of a trick to that. So let's go ahead and uh, select the Apple Service Berry 2 and just drag it over to the, to the grid and drop it on the grid. Okay. Now, if, uh, it's very important here. If you borrow a symbol, you want to make sure that you uh, break the link between the symbol and the database because right now it thinks that this symbol is an Apple service berry. And the way that we break the link is we go up to the edit bar and the little firecracker icon here is called explode. So let's go ahead and click on that. Okay, and now if I click back to this, you'll see that my lines are all exploded out into individual lines. I do have on this one one continuous line that wraps around that symbol which has not been exploded. So let's go ahead and reselect that symbol again. And this time let's go ahead and right click on it and select explode. Okay. Now I can do that several times. Let's go ahead and explode it again. And this is the message I want to see here, unable to explode any further. So that's a good thing in this case. Let's go ahead and click OK. All right. And now you'll see that I uh, can select those lines individually. So if I don't need to make any more changes to this and I'm ready to save the symbol, I simply go up to File and Save Symbol. Let's go ahead and call this one an Ash 2 and it's going to be saved in the tree deciduous library in the category of deciduous. 
I can put a description here. I do want to make sure it's linked to the database, so that needs to be checked, and I'll click OK. Now that should bring up our database and price editor. Okay, if I need to put a botanical name in here, I can do that, or a Spanish name. If I go to the Information tab, I can sel select the maximum height. Now this is a value that Image Editor uses. So let's go ahead and select that. And I'll go ahead and select a display height, which also Image Editor uses. I'll select 20 feet there. And we're going to go ahead and leave the growth speed at 8. Now the width here is a value that only shows up on the plant information report in Proposal. Okay, and the classification, let's go ahead and leave that at tree deciduous. If I need to change the climate zone, I can come down and let's go ahead and uncheck uh, zones 9 and 10. And now uh, that only shows up when I have uh, zones 1 through 8 displayed. I can change the sunlight, the flower season, the flower color, color, the soil, the website, the contributor information, horticopia ID, or care information here. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to the Images tab. Now if I have an image to assign to it that Image Editor can use, I can click here, and then I can navigate to the, uh, to the particular PLI file, uh, which is an image file, and select it. And then I'd click Open to assign it, and it should show up in this window here. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to the CAD Symbols tab. Now let's not worry that our CAD Symbol is not showing up here. When we restart Planner next time, it will show up uh, in this window. One thing that we do want to do on this window is to assign the rendered symbols. So let's go ahead and go to Photo and click to Assign. And that gives me several options of uh, the photorealistic symbols. So let's go ahead and select one that's representative of the, uh, the tree. And if I click OK here, this a symbol will show up in this window here, but if I select Load Set, then all of the symbols are populated. Okay, now if we jump over to the Pricing tab, we can set the, the default uh, size here that shows up every time that we use this uh, plant on a plan. Okay, if I need to change my pricing or my cost or any of the other uh, items in the database and price editor, I can do that here. Let's go ahead and close that. Okay, and now you'll see my ASH2 shows up with the new symbol here in the uh, content librarian of the symbol editor. So let's go ahead and close that. And it should also show up here on the content librarian within Planner.